Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to District Court. We're here for sentencing in the matter of State of Utah versus Ruby Frankie. Ms. Frankie is here with Mr. Winward. Mr. Clark and Mr. Shom are here for the State of Utah. And we are ready to proceed with sentencing. We are. Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, the terms of the sentence were agreed to as part of the plea agreement, correct? That is correct. There is a pre-sentence investigation report in the matter. I have reviewed that. Everyone has seen it? Yes. What about restitution, counsel, before we move on with other matters? We'd like to leave that open at this time, Your Honor. Um, the... I can get into that. I might be more comfortable if we approach to get into that. Is there an agreement that restitution, that uh, we reserve that f and for what period of time? Eight months is what we're anticipating. But, but I, I haven't talked to, to the defendant's counsel about that. We haven't discussed that, Your Honor. Is there any objection? No. All right. What's the state's position regarding sentencing? Your Honor, the state, I'll stand up. The state respectfully requests that the court sentence Ms. Frankie to consecutive prison terms for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. This sentence was agreed to by Ms. Frankie in her plea agreement and is also recommended by adult probation and parole. She committed horrible acts of child abuse. From May to August in 2023, Ms. Frankie and her business partner held her two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. The children were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or a stool for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten and the 12 year old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization when they were found. And the injuries from the binding to the 12 year old are particularly awful. In addition to physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused to the extent that each believed to some degree that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. After being caught, Ms. Frankie has shown considerable remorse as evidenced by agreeing to serve consecutive prison terms and being willing to cooperate with the state against Ms. Hildebrandt. However, given the severity of the abuse she inflicted, consecutive terms are appropriate in this case. As the courts All right, we need to slip in a commercial break, uh, but we're going to pick it up right where we left off. All right, and we're hearing consecutive is what she agreed to, so it seems like the judge is going to go along with that plea agreement, but what will we hear from Jody Hildebrandt? That's next. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Thanks so much for following along with us. I'm Julia Janae, along with Ted Rollins. We have a lot to get to today. The state has rested its case in chief for the trial of Adam Montgomery. That happened today in New Hampshire. Yeah, of course, he's facing the second degree murder charges and assault for the death of his little daughter, Harmony. Her body's never been found. The jury was sent home after the state rested. They'll be back tomorrow. We'll find out tomorrow if he will uh, grace the courtroom with his presence, which he hasn't done all trial long, and take the stand. We'll have more from Matt Johnson coming up this hour. And we're also covering the Utah sentencing hearing for former momfluencer Ruby Frankie and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt. Frankie and Hildebrandt admitted to four counts of child abuse, and each of those counts carries a sentence of up to 15 years. They are in front of a judge today under court order. We can't show this live, but we've just gotten clearance to show you Ruby Frankie's sentencing. So let's get you right back into court where we left off. 
Mm. All right. Got a bit of a technical difficulty, so we're going to hold yeah, for hold just off. a moment. Uh, we're going to um, hold off and uh, talk about what we're listening for here. The key is that under Utah law, the judge's hands are really tied. This sentence is, we know, 1 to 15 years per count. There's four, um, counts. four counts. The one thing the judge can do is have the defendant serve it consecutively, like all at the once. Or, or, or concurrently all at once, or consecutively. And if right. you're a defendant, you don't want consecutive, because no. they're top, boom, but boom, boom. What but is crazy to hear that we heard in the initial uh, presentation that we did before we took a break is that the agreement by Ruby Frankly was to do this consecutively, which we don't often hear from uh, yeah. a defendant, but she did get two of her counts dropped in this plea agreement, so that is the benefit. Part of the equation. <laughs> All right, uh, I understand we're ready to roll that. Uh, let's do it now. We'll pick it up where we left off. From May to August of 2023, Ms. Frankie and her business partner held her two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. The children were forced to do physical tasks like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or a stool for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization when they were found. And the injuries from the binding to the 12-year-old are particularly awful. In addition to physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused to the extent that each believed, to some degree, that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. After being caught, Ms. Frankie has shown considerable remorse, as evidenced by agreeing to serve consecutive prison terms and being willing to cooperate with the state against Ms. Hildebrand. Hildebrand. However, Given the severity of the abuse she inflicted, consecutive terms are appropriate in this case. As the court's aware, Section 76.3.401 lays out factors the court takes into account in determining whether consecutive or concurrent sentences should be imposed. Those factors are the gravity and circumstances of the offense, the number of victims, and the history, character, and rehabilitative needs of the defendant. As agreed to in the plea agreement, and as recommended by adult probation and parole, consecutive sentences are appropriate. This is due to the severity of the abuse to both victims. It could be argued that Ms. Frankie should receive a lesser sentence than Ms. Hildebrandt because of her remorse and willingness to cooperate with the state. However, the Board of Pardons and Parole will have broad latitude and will be able to take those facts into account when it determines how long each of the co-defendants will remain incarcerated. In conclusion, we respectfully request that the court um, go along with what was agreed to in the plea agreement and is recommended by adult probation and parole and impose consecutive sentences. Thank you. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. Mr. Winward? Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. In my few comments this morning and in the comments my client wishes to make in a few minutes, we are not suggesting nor are we asking that the court deviate from the stipulated sentence contained in the written plea agreement. I want the court to know that through introspection and reflection, Ruby Frankie has become a serious student of her own actions. In the very early days of my involvement with Ruby, she was somewhat defensive and she was still very much indoctrinated into a philosophy that was destructive. Fortunately, Ruby came to the stark realization of the errors in her thinking patterns and subsequent actions. To say that she was horrified by this realization would be to put it mildly. I have marveled at how quickly Ruby abandoned her defensive stance and moved toward her total acceptance of her actions <clears throat> and to her sentence today. So far, she has used her time in jail to unwrap 
the layers upon layers of deceit and deception foisted upon her over the last four years by an unscrupulous individual. Ruby realizes that she still has work to do in shedding those thinking errors and to reestablish a better and correct pattern of thinking and behavior. Ruby realizes that changing her thinking, reestablishing relationships, and healing are not simple or easy tasks. However, she is committed, committed to doing that work. I would like the court to know that Ruby Frankie is a delightful, respectful, and responsible person. She is open to feedback and addressing the consequences of her actions head on, and now ready to address your honor and accept your judgment. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you. Ms. Frankie has a statement she'd like to make. She does. You don't, you don't have to bend down the Okay. Thank you. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. Jody Hildebrandt, was never my business partner, nor was I ever employed by her. I have never received wages from her or connections. Jody was employed as my son's counselor in 2019, and in 2020, I paid her to be my mentor. It is important to me to demonstrate my remorse and regret without blame. I take full accountability for my choices and it is my preference that I serve a prison sentence. Thank you to the officers in Santa Clara and the Ivan City Police, Nick Hellman, Brian Palufo, Cy Pikivit, Mike Pondoyo in Tobler, John Ward, D. Lewis, and Chief Flowers. You were the angels who came and saved my children. I especially want to thank Detective Jay Bate she plucked me out of a situation I didn't know how to get out of. And the moment she handcuffed me was the moment I gained my freedom. You were not the controlling ones. I was. Thank you to the medical staff at Intermountain Hospital. Your skill, tenderness, and professionalism helped to heal my children. Jody and I inflicted the injuries, not the hospital. Thank you to DCFS the Children's Justice Center, Judge Basil, and other key adults. You've gathered my children under your wing and offered them love, compassion, encouragement. You were not the ones who were doing the brainwashing. Thank you to my Bishop Tom Hawks and my State President Jim Nelson for reminding me of the Lord's love for the lost. So much pain and suffering would have been avoided had I followed and heeded your counsel. I was the one who was deceived, not you. Thank you to the Washington County Prosecutor's Office, Ryan Shaw, the legal assistants and discovery clerks. Eric Clark, you exemplified to me how justice and mercy are meant to coexist. My charges are just. They offer safety to my family, accountability to the public, and they did show mercy to me. Thank you to my attorney, Lamar Winward, and his staff. I would not be where I am today without them. Thank you to Randy Kester for your limitless energy in healing my family. My dear friends, Pam and Roy, I'm so sorry for letting you down. Because of your association with me, your innocence was called into question. 
my mother-in-law, father-in-law, Kevin's family, my cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and neighbors. You all saw the warning signs long before I did, and you did what you could. You wanted to help, but I pushed you away. My mother and father, I have been utterly wretched to you. You have offered me unconditional love, and for that I have offered you unconditional contempt. My siblings and their spouses, because of my decision to roll around in a pigsty, I have dragged your families through the mud in public. Yet, when I desired to return as the prodigal sister, unlike the prodigal's brother in the Bible, you synced step with my parents and ran out to greet me. Your capacity to love is unprecedented. Kevin, my husband of more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. I'm so sorry to leave to you to finish what we both started together. The ending of our marriage is a tragedy. And you are wrapped around my heart. And you know I'll never be able to undo. To my babies. My six little chicks. You are part of me. I was the mama duck who was consistently running you to safety. I can see now that over the past four years I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I remember went into darkness knowingly. I was so disoriented that I believed dark was light and light was wrong. I would do anything in this world for you. My will is to sacrifice all things masterfully manipulated into something very ugly. I took from you all that was soft and safe and good. I took from you my mother. How terrifying this must have been for you. Trade sacred trust. Watching my community respond to my charges with justice and mercy and grace and love is all the more evidence to me how wrong I've been. This world is full of really good people. And finally, I'm sorry for twisting God's word and distorting his doctrines. My greatest desire is to stand in his court someday spotless and confident. And Judge Walton, I know that standing before you today is a necessary step towards that end. Thank you to you and your staff for facilitating my opportunity to take accountability and to answer for my charges. I am humbled and willing to serve a prison, a prison sentence as long as it takes to continue unraveling all of the disinformation I have believed and bought, swallowed and acted out, and for my family to heal and for the community to heal. And I understand this is going to take time. I'm committed to continuing my learning until all of my toxic layers are shed, and I am ready to re-enter as a contributing member of our beautiful society. Thank you, Judge Walton. Thank you for your statement, Ms. Frankie. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Ruby, frankly, in her own, Frankie, in her own words there, accepting responsibility on many levels, thanking pretty much everybody in the criminal justice the system. And we don't often and, see from yeah. uh, someone who is pleading guilty, saying that the charges are just. Mm. Get a break, and uh, we'll head back to the remainder of the hearing. Stay with us. 
tonight on Closing Arguments, the tragic case of Little Harmony Montgomery. The father of a missing girl with special needs stands trial charged with her murder. Is the state building a strong enough case for this jury to convict? Plus, controversial family influencer Ruby Frankie faces sentencing after pleading guilty to child abuse charges. We'll show you everything you may have missed from today's big hearing. Closing Arguments, tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Welcome back to Court TV Live. We are bringing you the sentencing hearing for former mom influencer Ruby Frankly. Her co-defendant Jody Hildebrandt is also facing that sentencing today. They both pleaded guilty to four counts of second degree aggravated child abuse. So, and it appears though that they've agreed, at least uh, Frankie, on serving these sentences consecutively, meaning um, at the end of the day, it's going to be four to 60 years total up to the Bureau of Prisons. Let's pick up the hearing for Ruby Frankie Hildebrand's next, um, right where we left off. Anything else prior to the court imposing sentence? No, Your Honor. The sentence will be that Ms. Frankie serve four counts, four one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child abuse. Again, they will serve consecutively, be served consecutively pursuant to the party's agreement and the applicable statute. Under the applicable statute, the court finds that, a cons that consecutive sentences are appropriate. Ms. Frankie, the last thing I do need to tell you is that you have only 30 days to file or to perfect an appeal of any errors of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that within 30 days, you will lose your right to appeal. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney on appeal and to have one appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Restitution as agreed by the parties will remain open for a period of eight months. Any of the parties can bring that matter back before the court within that, that period of time. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. The next matter before the court is State of Utah versus Hildebrandt, case 2315-01763. Terry is here representing Ms. Hildebrandt. Mr. Shum and Mr. Clark are here representing the state. Your Honor, we anticipated 10.30. I'm not saying that we need to wait till then, but can I have a moment, please? Approach, please. Okay, there, uh, the Ruby Frankly, Frankie has finished and uh, Jody Hildebrandt next. They're going to give him a little time here. Uh, let's talk about what we just watched with Marie Pereira. A couple things uh, that uh, I, I noticed. First of all, listening to her, the abuse was, uh, was real. Um, it was real. And, and, and what they did to those kids was, was real. She also tried to clarify. I was a I did not go into business with this woman. I paid her to be my mentor, kind of saying I was the victim. But what stood out to you? Frankly, Frankie did that. And she deserves an Academy Award for that because <laughs> the exponential level of remorse and contrition that she expressed before the court even touched me. But basically what she's saying is, I really didn't do this my co-defendant brainwashed me and resulted in me having a break from mental uh, reality, okay? And it made me paranoid, it made me delusional, and it turned me into this horrible person. She did that. She did it in the right way, and I think it may impact the judge to really give her the low end of that 1 to 15 
while still consecutive, it may not turn out to be that much because let's say she might get one for each. She showed contrition, she showed remorse, she acknowledged, she took accountability, she apologized to her accusers, she apologized to the people who captured her and punished her. She could hold a master class and put this on YouTube and make money after the fact because I don't think her co-defendant is gonna come back with anything stronger than that. She did a great job and if she really means it, then there's hope for rehabilitation and there could be something good out of this. And she may eventually mend things with her family. Now, I don't think I've ever seen someone thank the officers who essentially yes. uh, arrested her, took her children from her, and she said, thank you to those angels who saved my children. Uh, and to clarify, she, the minimum is four years of what the judge uh, sentenced her to it will be up to the parole board as to when she will be able to get out between four and sixty years yeah and she, she uh, you know she said when she got the handcuffs put on her that's when um, reality came back and she got her life back fascinating that's for sure we'll see what's up next with Jody Hildebrandt uh, what will she say to this court we didn't see her in the courtroom I'm assuming they're gonna be bringing her in because they asked for a little delay but we'll find out stay with us TV Live on this Tuesday, along with Julia Janae, I'm Ted Rollins. Glad to have you along with us. It's uh, another busy week here. We've been following several stories. Right now, we are paying attention to the sentencing hearing for former momfluencer Ruby Frankly, Frankie rather, and her co-defendant Jody Hildebrandt. Both of them pleaded guilty to four counts of second-degree aggravated child abuse. Let's go back into the court now. Uh, we watched Ruby Frankie. Now it's time for Jody Hildebrandt. What will she say, if anything, to the court? Calls the matter of State of Utah versus Hildebrandt, case 2315017763. Counsel are present. Ms. Hildebrandt is present. Counsel, there is a pre-sentence investigation report. I have read it. Everyone has seen and reviewed that. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Again, the sentence was stipulated at the time of the plea agreement. What what record do we need to make other than going forward with sentencing? Um, I, Your Honor, I it, it would be repetitive. I so I, I have the same statement, just with the last few paragraphs where where I was differentiating between Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrand. Okay, let's talk about about housekeeping right. matters first. What about restitution? We, we stipulated to keep that open for eight months. It is appropriate, Your Honor, since we don't have any evidence with respect to restitution, and that's because it is still in the process of being gathered by uh, the county attorney's office. It's, a, it's completely appropriate for the court to make no orders with respect to restitution other than to reserve all issues regarding restitution, and we have no issue with the eight-month eight uh, uh, time frame. And the injunction that was previously issued by the court will remain in effect. It will. In, at least until that time. It will remain in effect until further order of this court. All right. Mr. Clark. Thanks, Your Honor. The state of Utah respectfully requests that the court sentence Ms. Hildebrandt to consecutive prison terms for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse to which she has pleaded guilty. The sentence was agreed to her in her plea agreement and is also recommended by adult probation and parole. Ms. Hildebrandt committed awful acts of child abuse. From May to August 2023, she and her business partner held two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting in her house in Ivan City. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house. They were forced to do physical tasks like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and doing wall sits or sitting against a wall without assistance of a chair or stool for hours at a time. They were forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, often without shoes or socks. And they were also forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days. They were beaten and the 12 year old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. 
Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization to treat. The injuries from the binding are particularly bad. In addition to the physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused. They each believed to some degree that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the two children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived. After being caught, Ms. Hildebrandt has shown little to no remorse for her actions. In telephone conversations that will be provided in full to the Board of Pardons and Parole, and which she knew to be recorded, she's repeatedly claimed that she is the victim and the children are the perpetrators. She has gone so far as to say that the things said in this proceeding and covered by the media today will be full of lies. The combination of three factors make Ms. Hildebrand a significant threat to the community. First, the severity of the abuse she caused to be inflicted on young children. Second, her attitude that everything she did was justified and that she is being wrongfully imprisoned. <clears throat> and third, her training as a therapist and aptitude for using online resources to convince others to follow her guidance. Utah Code Section 76-3401 lays out three factors the court should consider in determining whether to impose concurrent or consecutive sentences. The first is the gravity and circumstances of the offense. The second is the number of victims. And the third is the history, character, and rehabilitative need of the defendant. As agreed to in the plea agreement and as recommended by adult probation and parole, consecutive sentences are appropriate here. This is due to the severity of the abuse to the two victims and the extreme need for Ms. Hildebrandt to be rehabilitated so that she no longer will present a risk to the community. The state respectfully requests that she be sentenced to four consecutive terms. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Terry. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I will be brief. As is always the case in cases that come before courts, there are two sides to every case. And as, um, and even in a case like this, that remains the case. Um, there are many, many allegations regarding these two individuals, um, Ms. Frankie and my client, Ms. Hildebrand. The only facts in this case that are adjudicated facts are those set forth in the plea agreement that she entered into, that she entered into freely and knowingly and voluntarily. Those facts, those adjudicated facts are significant. They certainly provide a basis for the pleas and provide a basis for the stipulated sentence in this case. My experience with Ms. Hildebrandt is that she is not the person that she has been portrayed to be. But having said that, she has accepted responsibility in this case. She has entered into this plea agreement with a stipulated sentence of four consecutive uh, sentences. She did that at the time she entered into the plea agreement, knowing that that would be the court's order. She is before the court today knowing that that will be the court's order, and she fully accepts that. She accepts responsibility, and she accepts the consequences for her conduct. And we will submit it to the court on the stipulated agreement. Mr. Terry, you suggested that there, there are two sides to every case. I generally agree with you. Ms. Hildebrand didn't make a statement to AP and P in, in the course of the pre-sentence investigation report. Correct. Why did she not make, make a statement? She wanted to reserve her right to make a statement before the court today, and she has a brief statement that she wants to read, Your Honor. Okay. And, and All I, right. Ms. Hildebrand? Go ahead. I sincerely love these children. I desire for them to heal physically and emotionally. One of the reasons I did not go to trial is that I did not want them to emotionally relive the experience which would have been detrimental to them. 
My hope and prayer is that they will heal and move forward to have beautiful lives. I am willing to submit to what the state feels would be an appropriate amount of time served to make restitution as an outcome. And in answer to your question, Your Honor, I knew that whatever she might say to the author of the pre-sentence report would probably be sound uh, hollow or, and self-serving, and perhaps it does today. But I know that my client, in the statement that she makes to the court today, that that, that, that statement is absolutely sincere. Not is just Ms. Hildebrandt recognized that it's her behavior that that caused the harm to the children that she's referred to in her statement? Your Honor, she recognizes that she was, along with Miss Frankie, um, that, that she made decisions with respect to the discipline of those children that were wrong, that caused harm to those children. She fully recognizes that and accepts responsibility for that. All right. Anything else? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Hildebrandt, this, this circumstance is tragic. It's largely, of course, of your making. By any measure, your conduct in this case was disastrous for these children. Adults are supposed to protect children. Adults with specialized training, in particular, are supposed to protect children. You didn't do that in this case. In this, in this case, you terrorized children, and the results have been tragic. It's what happened to these children and your philosophy in dealing with them frankly seems detached from reality or any objective standard of decency or, or even common sense. And the court finds that it is appropriate that you serve a prison sentence. The court finds under the statute, Utah Code 76-3-401, that given the gravity and circumstances of the offenses, the number of victims and the history and character and needs of the defendant that consecutive sentences are appropriate, the court imposes four one to 15 year sentences to be again served consecutively for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. The last thing I do need to tell you is that you only have 30 days to file or perfect an appeal of any error of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that, you will lose your right to appeal. That has to be filed in writing and again within 30 days. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney and to have an attorney appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Thank you. We're in recess. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, John. Night and day reactions from these co-defendants. Ruby Frankly, Frankie was earlier today. Jody Hildebrandt there leaving the courtroom. Let's bring in Marie Pereira, former prosecutor, criminal defense attorney who is standing by. Marie, you were moved by Ruby Frankly's presentation in court. Tell me about what you think of how Jody Hildebrandt addressed the court. You, you know what they say, your attitude determines your altitude. And I think her attitude is going to result in the parole board looking at her in a tougher way than the co-defendant because she really didn't take accountability for anything. And we didn't hear the jail calls, but in some in substance, the prosecutors summarized it. And she basically was blaming the kids. She didn't take accountability. She didn't really show remorse. And whatever remorse she showed was very abbreviated. And she just said, you know what? They'll be all right. Basically, they will go on to have a beautiful life. And I'm sorry about what happened to them, but with therapy, they will be all right, as they say in the streets. She's going to be in prison longer than Frankie. Frank Lee, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, that seems very clear. Um, the reference to the jail calls and then the prosecutor saying, oh, and we'll be forwarding these calls to the Bureau of Prisons. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is a clear indication that they're going to do what they can uh, from yes. uh, the prosecution standpoint to enforce that long, a longer sentence. But, you know, four years is a long time. We'll see how this uh, thing plays out. Uh, bottom line, though, uh, Marie, the, 
the the abuse that these kids suffered was 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 extensive, and um, we didn't get it much from um, from Hildebrandt, but Ruby, frankly, she said uh, these Frankie. She almost, you know, she basically said they could have. They were saved, you know, by getting caught, these kids were saved. Um, and four years seems like not enough for the abuse that these kids were enduring. It doesn't seem like enough because when you hear the facts, it's like attempted murder. The only reason that these kids are alive is because that little boy escaped to the neighbor's house. So for them to treat it and give it such a light sentence is, I agree with you, is not enough because these were not intellectually challenged people. These are people who were on the internet trying to tell other people how to raise their kids and making money off it. So you know what? I'm really impressed by the fact that Frankie seems to frankly be taking full responsibility for what she did, although she threw her co-defendant under the bus because she really said, I was brainwashed. By who? By that woman, Hildebrandt. Yeah, and, we didn't hear any acknowledgement of that at all from Hildebrandt at all in her statement, though it was very brief.